Hey. You got a joke for me? Happy evening. Oh, Happy man. Evening. I've got one if you don't. Go ahead, and then I'll think okay. about it. I've actually got two. Okay. So, uh, these two little boys, they're walking down a street in New York City, and uh, they come across a construction site, right? And so, one boy, he picks up a brick, and he's like, dude, I bet you I can take this brick, and I can throw it up in the air, and it won't come back down. And the other kid's like, you're an idiot. That's impossible. He's like, no, I, I guarantee you. Like, bet you $10. The kid's like, all right, fine, whatever. So he takes the brick and he just chucks it as hard as he can up into the air. And that's the end of the joke. Okay. <laughs> you get it? Cause it didn't come back down. Yeah, I get it. Cause it didn't come back down. All right, whatever. I got, I got a better one. Okay. So there's this guy <laughs> and he's on a plane, right? And this is like back when like smoking was still allowed on a plane. Okay. And so, they're flying through the air, and he, he lights a cigarette, and all of a sudden, he starts hearing this quacking noise. And he looks around. He's trying to figure it out. And he looks behind him, and there's a lady sitting right behind him, and she's got a pet duck with her. And it's just quacking and quacking and quacking. And so he looks at the lady, and he's like, can you get your duck to stop quacking? And she's like, well, he really doesn't like cigarette smoke, so if you stop smoking, he'll stop quacking. He's like, well, I'm not going to stop smoking. Like, get your duck to stop quacking. And they just start arguing back and forth, and finally... A flight attendant comes up and grabs the duck, grabs the guy's cigarette, goes to the door, opens the door, throws both out, and then closes the door. A couple minutes later, the guy looks out the window, and he sees the duck sitting on the pl- the plane wing. You'll never guess what's in its mouth. Bro, if it's the brick. It's I'm the gonna... brick. <laughs> <laughs> what a stupid joke. <laughs> oh, man. I'm locking that one away. That was good. I like... <laughs> Like, I had a feeling I knew where it was going, and when you said, guess what was I did? That's funny. <laughs> I like it. Oh, man. I was so engulfed in that joke, the story. I'm going to be honest. It was an amazing, amazing story. story. I, 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 I got a couple of one-liners. Oh, man. What um. So I forgot how to throw a boomerang, but then it came back to me. <laughs> yep. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Classic, I'm sorry. <laughs> classic dad joke. Well, on that note. Oh, my gosh. Never again. Welcome to Featuring Fatherhood episode so seven or eight. Seven or eight, yeah. Yep. Um, so tonight we are talking about the books that have influenced us. Um, neither one of us are like deep readers, we've learned. Um, but when we find a book that we actually can read, like it usually is a good book. There were those series as kids, though, yes. that you just like. Oh, I. Like I read uh, The Boxcar Children. Yep. Which there were, there's hundreds of oh, Boxcar yeah. Children. Magic Treehouse. Magic Treehouse. Harry Potter. Were you yes. allowed to read Harry Potter? I read Harry Potter when I left. The- <laughs> <laughs> and I It was great. So I'm the oldest of eight kids, and I moved out when I was 17. And when I moved out, they started letting <laughs> all of a sudden. <laughs> That's I'm always like, how it me? is. That's always how it is. Oh, yeah. But yes, I did love Harry Potter. Yep. Nice. So. Yeah, so we're going to talk about the books that have influenced us. We each brought have brought a couple to share. Um, so do you want to go first? You want me to? Um, I got my books up, so All I can right, go ahead. Go for it. Sweet, man. Well, I'm going to knock two two books out with one because um, they're kind of the same, off the same basis. So, obviously, I've been in this. Um, I say obviously because we've talked about it in past yeah, yeah. podcasts. If, if this is your first podcast, then I've been in this journey of, you know, w- discovering the the heart of Jesus in, in worship yeah. and just diving in a little bit deeper into what that looks like in my daily routine um, as, as a worship leader, what does that look like? And, and things like that. And so the first book I have, um, kind of set it straight for me. This is really the kind of the first book I read when I started this journey, I would say at least two, two or three years ago. It's called the reset by Jeremy Riddle, Riddle returning to the heart of worship and a life of undivided devotion. And Jeremy Riddle, if you guys don't know, he's, he's a very, very good writer, a lyrical, uh, in lyrical composition, like he wrote Fall Afresh, All Hail King Jesus, things like that. So um, very, in, um, very, very um, encouraging writer. Yeah. Um, so this, pu- this book, when I say kind of set me straight, um, I was, I would say it kind of uh, didn't offend me, but it kind of opened my eyes to the realization like, hey, you know, as a society, we have somewhat become stagnant to what worship is. Yeah. Um, it's become performance-based. It's become 
how good can we sound as a band? And that's and that is important. That right. really is. Like right. obviously, there's a reason you don't that want to go to church with the church that just yeah. sounds. Yeah, and, and it honestly, it becomes a, distra- a yeah, distraction, exactly. right? Exactly. And it could, that's the it, reason why, not because you know we're. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Our church does have smoke machines and I'm just joking. Yeah. I Craig to, would. I used to work at a church that did. Let's not <laughs> talk about that. Yes. So I'm trying, I'm trying to get smoke mas- machines in the budget, but I keep getting denied. Can you believe that? Unbelievable. It's a priority. It's it's amazing what they deny, like what things we're not allowed to do. Like yeah. I tried to do a hot tub party in the baptismal. They denied it. <laughs> they denied it. Are you kidding me? Oh man. If that's not going to draw people in, I don't know what is. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, this is exactly <laughs> what the book is about, <laughs> is returning to the heart of Jesus in regard to worship. And like I said, open my eyes um, to, to, to how I was, I was worshiping. Um, it was a once on a Sunday, once or twice a week just to practice, mm-hmm. and that was it. And it was just to make sure that I remembered the songs and I sound, still sounded okay. And um, completely off track of, you know, where I should have been as a worship leader. So that was quite the eye opener, praise God. So that kind of introduced me and started me on this journey um, of, you know, diving in a little bit deeper as to what worship is. And this kind of led me to this next book. And this I would probably say is my... Behind the Bible, of course. The Bible is my favorite book of all time. Of course. Christian answer. (laughs) Exactly. is how to worship a king. Mm. And it dives into a deep look as to what what happens yeah. when you worship um, and who we are as worshipers. It's just so refining to you know be able to read a book that consistently resorts back to the scripture. And you know, I, I, I find it difficult to listen to people who, you know, who might preach and then not you know, have scripture to back it up and everything in this book, you know, you can go back and you could read and, you know, be like, wow, this is really what God was trying to tell us all along. Um, so this book really opened my eyes into not only a worshiper, um, in a congregation or a church setting, but like as, as a father, uh, what that looks like for my children. I want my children to, to grow up knowing what it means to worship Jesus. Um, and that they have, they don't need my permission. Yeah. Right. And that's, that's something I encourage, you know, the, 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 um, the church on like Sunday mornings is you guys don't need my permission. This is not about me giving you permission. The invitation is there. You are, you are, you are here and you know, we have prepared the way and you are good to be able to worship however you feel like you need to. So that's, 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 this book was extremely influential in that part of my life. So, nice. yeah, and you t- you've talked about that one yeah. in a uh, podcast we or episode we did a couple weeks ago. So we'll link that one. Yeah, up here somewhere. Yeah. So if you want to go here, just so I talk a little bit more about worship, go watch that. Um, okay. My first one uh, is a book called Family Revision. This is by a guy named Jeremy Pryor. Um, who? So I I first read this probably two years ago, maybe a year and a half ago, right before Amelia was born. Um, and so this is a book where he takes um, a look at ancient Israel, right? So like first century Israel and how families were um, structured, I guess would be a way to say it uh, back then. And then comparing it to today and like basically what we can learn from first century families um, when it comes to family, when it comes to mission, when it comes to, you know, looking at multi-generational family, stuff like that. So um, really, really cool book. This changed a lot about what I thought about parenting, about family, uh, about mission. Um, The biggest takeaway that I had from this was like, if you look at um, families in first century Israel, like you would have multi-generational families, right? Because you'd have grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, whoever living all in one place. Um, it's not just the nuclear family. Um, but then also like everyone has the same, like the shared mission and it's a mission that spans generations. Right. Whereas you look at like families today in America and it's, we're focused on the nuclear family, right? Um, everyone's very individualistic, like 
son has his priorities, daughter has her priorities, mom, dad, they each have their own priorities, right? And they come together at times, but like individually they have their own priorities. Um, and they're usually not priorities that are going to be generational. Yeah. Um, and so really cool perspective. Um, and, and he's a guy who lives it out with his family. Um, and so he gives his own experience with it as well. Um, I've really come to love the author. I've, uh, watched a bunch of his videos on YouTube and podcasts. Um, I'm even a part of a group that he has, uh, that's basically like helping families figure out like, Hey, what's your, like, what, what business can you do as a family? Like, what can you build? And so, uh, I get to be on zoom calls with him every once in a while. And it's pretty oh, cool. Wow. That's yeah. Great. Wow. So love this. And it's, it led me to a bunch of other books too, like on this topic by Jefferson Bethke, which we'll link, I'll link all these, but we'll link all of these books, but I'll add some additional ones down there yeah. uh, in the description. But like Jefferson Bethke has some books on family. Um, John Tyson has a really good book on, uh, being an intentional father with your kids. Um, the book that Justin early, uh, wrote that we're going through in huddle, uh, is another really good one. So yeah, this, this one set me off on a trajectory to, to think about families differently. Yeah. So it's awesome. Love it. Yeah. Good stuff. Do your second one. Sure. I cheated and did two of them. Um, I don't, so I don't have my second one physical copy. Just imagine <laughs> it's right here. Green screen it in. Um, but it's called seeing through the fog by Ed Dobson. And so this one, this was one that was introduced to me in college. Um, when I was in a, it was introduced by a professor. Um, and I was in like a season where I was very hopeless. Um, like just feeling really down. Um, and this book it's written by an author called Ed Dobson, named Ed Dobson. He was a pastor in Michigan, um, who in 2000 was diagnosed with ALS. And so this book, uh, it's basically like looking at his perspective, his perspective and his battle with ALS, but like how he found hope in the midst of it. Um, and then he also looks at the story of, uh, the disciples on the lake when, you know, there's a storm and, um, they're scared that the, the waves are going to crash over them and everything. And, um, Jesus like sees them and walks to them and gets in the boat and calms the storm. Right. And so it's this beautiful story of how to find hope in the midst of really difficult situations. And so I've returned to this book, like, many times, uh, like in seasons of hopelessness. And I actually, I don't have a copy. I bought the book probably like three or four times because I always like end up giving it to people. Yeah. Cause it's, it's one of those books that's yeah. like, it's so good. And I like hand it off to someone when they're in a difficult season and then I never get it back. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, super, super cool book. Um, I think the thing that's really stuck with me and shaped me has been this, like looking at this story of Jesus like when we're in difficult situations, when we feel like we're in the midst of a storm, uh, like the waves are crashing over us and we can't see Jesus. And this, like, I, I just came out of one of these seasons. Um, it, it's important for us to remember when we can't see Jesus in these seasons, like Jesus sees us. Like the story goes that Jesus was up on the hill praying, up on the mountain praying while his disciples were on the lake. And it says Jesus could see them struggling at the oars. Um, and so Jesus walks out to the water. So he sees us, he walks to us and gets in our situation. He gets in the boat um, and then he calms the storm. Yeah. And I've seen God do this in my life multiple times. Um, obviously saw it through the eyes of Ed as he's talking about this. Um, and just amazing, amazing book. Love yeah. It. That's so, so good. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I feel like I've been in a season of that recently as well in regard to like, you know, how often we find ourselves <laughs> praising God in the happy moments. Yeah but like falling short in the the tough moments yeah. where we're asking the God, the question, you know, why God, yeah. why? And, um, so and I, I have found that when I, when I'm seeking God out in those situations, the, the end result is so much more like, like I have peace yeah. and hope yeah. in, um, in the outcome. So that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's good. All right. Well, I have one. Um, so this is, I hate the title of this. I'm going to be 100% serious. I'm, I'm adjusting your mic. Was it, was it's it covering my nose? Me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at that monitor and it's like, wait up here. I'm just going to have it from now on. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a book, uh, by Dale Carnegie called how to win friends and influence people. Mm, I've heard about this one. Yeah. Have you heard about uh -huh. it? And it's, it's a great book. I don't like the title of it. I understand why they, because it kind of catches your eye. Right. And it's yeah. honestly, it's kind yeah. of annoying. 
Like it just sounds, <laughs> you know, it just sounds, sounds sounds a little douchey. Yeah, a little bit. Like I want as many. For, it kind of, <laughs> you know, you know who would write something like this? Um, Mike Michael Scott, How to oh, Win yeah. Friends. You know that what's, one episode? What's his memoir? I can't, uh, if you can remember the memoir of Michael Scott, please put it in the comments because I'm blanking. I'm reminded it. of that one episode of The Office when they're watching the ep- like the TV episode of him when he's a little kid. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. And he's like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Or something like that. And it's like, regard- I want to be a billionaire and have 100 I, I, friends. And, and, and they can like never that. tell me no. Yeah. And the puppet just kind of stares at him. <laughs> it's a puppet. So, <laughs> so that title kind of reminds me of that episode. I don't know why. But the reality of it, so I'm in I'm in management. In fact, I had to put out quite the fire today. And this and I, I, I and I account a lot to, you know, I worked at Sweetwater and there was a lot of good um, managerial experience mm-hmm. and they put me through classes and this is one of the books that we read in regard to how to handle different personalities. Um, because the reality of it is, is that when you work in a business and you work with clients or you work with them, in your case, clients, in my my case, employees, um, every single day, some people are not going to click with right. the way that your personality clicks, right. right? And there is there is always a way to handle every situation, no matter what situation it is. Um, and it's not necessarily a Christian book, but, but they consistently resort back to the, the way out of things is making sure you're staying calm. And you're staying, um, you know, you're you're at peace, and you're smiling, and you're handling every situation with complete structure, um, and that's what I've that's what I've learned from that, and this helped me out many many times. Obviously, I'm not saying I'm perfect, and <laughs> I've definitely gotten upset at a couple scenarios, but the reality of it is, there is a way to handle it. There's a godly way to handle it, yeah. and I would say, you know, that book's helped me out in that regard. So nice, nice, solid. Uh, Okay, my next one. So this is, uh, I've had two Christian books. This is not a Christian book. I actually, side note, I remember giving this to a girl that I liked once to, like I was telling her about, like, oh, this is the book I'm reading. And I was like, here, you can borrow it. And I completely forgot that there's a scene in here um, where it's a coming of age story, right? Okay. So there's a scene in here where the, like, boy is going through puberty and it talks about, like, how he's got morning wood. And how he's walking to the bathroom like no with a way. towel on it. And I'm just like, <laughs> I remember that after I gave it you to panicked, him, like, man. You like, panicked. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. I don't think she. I don't think she read it that far though. So, uh, anyways, this is a book called The Power of One. Uh, this is a fictional book set in uh, pre World War II uh, South Africa, which was a time of I guess there was English influence, but also German influence, um, and then obviously you know, uh, the people who are native to South Africa. Um, and so this is a coming of age story. Um, but it's a young British boy who like, he starts out his life and he's in a school of all German boys. And so he's just completely picked on. Um, and that just kind of, I don't know, sets the scene for his life. Like he's always against the world, like, and it's his fight against the world. Um, but he has this epic journey throughout his young life, his young adulthood. Um, and all throughout it, like he gets multiple different mentors who are influencing him and teaching him different things. Um, but the whole, like, like the story of it is like, it's his power. Right. But then you look at all these mentors and it's like the power of each individual mentor to make an influence okay. on his life. And so I just, I absolutely love it because like it shows the power that someone can have in your life, like the influence, influential power you could have. Um, and my favorite, like of all of his mentors, um, is this, uh, guy that he meets on a train. So he's traveling from a boarding school when he's like five to a new town where he's going to live with his grandpa and mom. Um, and while on the train, it's a two day trip. He is traveling alone. And so the conductor is this like young adult guy. Um, and he spends the whole day with the kid. And then, like, tells him all about boxing and how his dream is to wow. become the welterweight champion of the world. And, like, when the train stops for a night, he takes the kid to a fight. Like, he makes a huge impact on this kid. Um, and it changes his trajectory. Like, his his sole focus for the rest of his life is to become the welterweight champion of the world. Wow. And so, like, 
This was oh, a guy who cool. was only in his yeah. life for two days and has a huge influence. I would oh, say the yeah. biggest influence. And so it's always just been one of those things to me. It's like, it's a reminder that like, no matter how short you are in someone's life, like you have the power to be a huge influence. Oh dude, that's so good. And it's just, it's such a good story. Like I yeah. actually had to, I, I watched this, there's a movie and I watched it um, in high school in my morality and film class. I had a morality in film class because I went to a Catholic high school. It was <laughs> really cool. The, the What's film a morality? Class. It was like looking at films and like talking about the morality inside films. Really? Yeah. That, that's, it was actually, that, it was actually really, really, really cool. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, but we watched this this movie and I didn't realize it was a book until like after college and I found it and like devoured it. Yeah. So super yeah. good. Highly recommend if you need a good story. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that's so good. I remember one time uh, when I when I worked at Sweetwater, there was a there was a we had a VP of distribution that I worked with for I would say six out of the eight years I worked there. Um, his name was Brian, and what you said there was so clear because like the way that Brian treated me impacted me so much mm-hmm. that it changed my the way I lived my life yeah. and how I might impact other people yeah and and he he didn't do we didn't converse a lot but the few times that we conversed he was he 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 supported me he listened to me and those small moments have more impact on other people's lives than we sometimes realize so handle every single moment like that like hey what i say here could impact you uh what you say could impact that person for the rest of life so good yeah you got Uh, any more Huh? You got any more? I got one more. Okay. I've got an honorable mention. Sweet. Well, this is, I would say, my honorable mention uh, as of recently. <laughs> it's the Crocodile Hunter. Um, the Incredible Life and Adventures of Steve and Terry Irwin. And it I means love a lot this. to me. It means a lot to me. And, oh, wow. Yeah, it smells, smells like my grandpa. <laughs> smells like my grandpa. So, um, we, my dad and I bought my grandpa this book when I was like a little kid. Okay. Like a very small kid. And I was so excited because if there was anything that my grandpa and I connected the best on, it was watching the crocodile hunter. Dude. Like from day one. Yeah. And he, he just, I just remember those days where it would be me and my grandpa and my brother and some of my cousins and we'd have Coney dogs. And, um, if, 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 as long as my dad wasn't there, he'd let me have some of his Pepsi. (laughs) It was great. And we'd watch the crocodile hunter. And when I bought him this book, I was so excited. I was like, grandpa, look what I got you. And he was so excited and it (laughs) meant the world to me. Yeah. Um, and then as of recently before he, so he passed away last week and I would say about a month ago, he gave this to my boys mm. and uh, they've read it and we've watched the crocodile hunter yeah. on, on YouTube. And I think discovery plus has the entirety yeah. of, and it's just like that. First of all, this guy is a, uh, this guy is amazing. Dude. So great. He just want, he just loved life. Yeah. Like he was all about life and experiencing it to the most. And what a good book, um, to, you know, good, you know, reading it with my boys, I'm just realizing like this guy legitimately just wanted the world to be a better place. Yeah. And you know, like I said, it smells like my grandpa was a heavy smoker and it smells like <laughs> cigarettes, but that kind of, it gives me a lot of peace Yeah, and to know that I have that, yeah. um, to be able to so cool. experience with my kids yeah. for the rest of my life. And you know, hopefully that book stays around for a while. Cause it's really, it's, it's that. And a couple of things are the last things I have yeah. with my grandpa. And so, but yeah, dude, yeah. That's good awesome. old croc, cro- crocodile hunter. I can't, I'm not even going to try to do crikey, dude. Nice. Okay. <laughs> that's awesome. That is yeah. really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So my honorable mention is, uh, the Chronicles of Narnia, I, the whole set, but I just pulled the first one. This is the first one, by the way. Like, if Medusa's you think the you. first one is a different one, I will fight you. That is the first one. This yeah, is the yeah. first one. Only the real C.S. Lewis fans know oh, that it, it does not I, start with the, the get, line, The Witch I and the Wardrobe. I am so annoyed. But anyways, um, this is probably my favorite. Do you remember too. all of them? Yeah. Magistus' nephew. Wait, 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 okay. Hold it. Magistus' nephew, 
course, and his boy, mm-hmm. Chronicles of Narnia. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get it lost now. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Um, Prince Caspian. Yep. Voyage of the Dawn Treader. Yep. Dude, this is where that's, it's good. That's five, right? Yeah. Yeah. Silver chair. Silver chair. Yep. Is there one more? Mm-hmm. Oh, the last battle or yep. something? Is that it? Yep. Yes. Yep. Let's go. So good. I'm so pumped. Yeah. I I absolutely love the Chronicles of Narnia. Um, I think like it's just such a beautifully told story. And I, I mean, I love all C.S. Lewis books. Like if you go back into my bookshelf, like I've got so many C.S. Lewis books. Um, but I I I feel like there's so many times where you can place yourself in these stories and like you can see like the way that Aslan treats the yeah. children, like, and how God's treating you. Like, it's the reason why I had got a lion tattoo yeah. on my arm. Like, because there's so many times where like you look at this story and you're like, Oh, he's doing that for them. But like, God's done that for me. Yeah. And I think my favorite part of the whole series uh, is in the magician's nephew. Um, the young boy who like had made a colossal mistake, like missed the mark big time. Um, he like is standing before Aslan and he's like, Aslan is drawing out from him like a confession about it. Um, and the boy's just ashamed. He's looking down at, at the lion's paws. And then there comes a moment where he looks up into Aslan's face and he's surprised to see Aslan crying. And he's crying because of like his great yeah. love for the boy. And it's just like, it's so, so good, man. heartwarming and like just speaks to me. I love yeah. it. So yeah. Chronicles. Of I can't wait till Amelia is old enough that we can like read this at night. Yeah. Like, sorry, girl, but awesome. this is, this is being forced on you. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I also, fun fact, I actually used to write quite a bit of books too. Have you? Yeah. They're not, they weren't great. I mean, I, I wrote, but, a, I don't know if I can call it a book or I mean, nothing that thing. was published. It was more yeah. like paper that was stapled together. <laughs> I remember but, doing that young authors in, in uh, elementary school. Yeah. I yeah. I would write, dogs. I would write comic books, dude. dude. Oh man. I was a big comic book guy, yeah. but back when I had a stronger imagination, <laughs> you know, that's how it goes now. All right. Uh, we've got a 42 seconds before we end, uh, out of your books, pick the one that you're going to make the other person read. Ooh. Man, you give me the big one. <laughs> Once you stop, you're not going to be able All to right. finish. It's my favorite book. I'm down. Let's do it. I, I like this. I was not expecting this. No, I literally just thought of it. So. <laughs> well, right. thank you guys for watching. Join us next time. Uh, if you like this video, please do like this. Uh, give it a thumbs up. That does help us. Uh, share it with someone. Subscribe if you're not already. And see you yeah. guys next time. Awesome. See you guys.